or at least be able to race for it. Sorry, Carl. Yeah, and even with that car hitting the ground, it's, he's still fast. I think four tires were the right call. Looks like Kurt Busch was putting the move on the 43 car there. Fifth place there, Kurt going by Michael Annette. I'll tell you, Kurt Busch has been having to really drive this car, though. I saw early in the race, he couldn't hardly hold it down in, in anywhere near the bottom of the track. I think they probably made an adjustment. It looks like it's a little better, but he's still wheeling it. Yeah, I think uh, Jamie's got a, a report on the biggest mover there, Kurt. Kurt got four tires on the pit stop, and he uh, he's gained 14 spots, Jamie. Yes, he did that first run that we were talking about how loose he looked. He said he was just a five loose, but he wanted some changes. So they put a spring rubber in that left rear, which is why they changed four tires. And he said, man, we had no indication of this. You see his brother Kyle on the left-hand side. He's talking to his brother about the car. Now, since the adjustments, Kurt is saying it's better. We're about a three loose. We need to stick, keep working, though, and he's already gained eight spots since the restart. Just a five loose? <laughs> what does that feel like, Carl? Yeah, five is a lot on my scale. Now, you see uh, Kyle's got two wires coming down. He's probably got a radio that he's talking to the crew with, so he's right. not bothering his brother. Now, being, you never know, he might not care if he's bothering his brother. He might just be talking, but he's probably talking to the crew there, explaining his version of how to fix this thing. Yeah. I, saw, I spent some time in the garage area with this team during practice, and, and uh, Kyle was right there the whole time. He's very into the all of the aspects of the team and was very involved in what they were doing as far as changes and talking to Kurt on the radio. And we saw Brad Keselowski had that problem on his right front tire the last pit stop. He went way back to the back, and he's marching forward. He's picked up, what, 15 or 16 spots since the uh, the pit stop, so doing a great job. He restarted 30th and just moved up there. We saw him to 13th spot. Elliott Sadler, Brian Scott, Denny Hamlin, 211 and 18. And that's for 8th, 9th, and 10th. And the two cars better with Elliott Sadler. He's better this run than he was the start of the race. We had some interesting audio we heard in the break about, uh, was it was it uh, Denny in the 18 talking about all four tires were chattering. He said, he said all four tires were chattering. That's not a good sign. You don't want to go down the corner and have a car. Uh, well, we were talking tires. about the, the balance, and you want all four tires working about the same. It sounds like that's yeah. what's going on. You want them all four sliding, maybe not making grip, not chatter. Okay, right there is a little miscommunication on, because he said what I heard was a four wheels chatter. The crew chief heard rear tire chatter. So that's one. That's that's kind of how you can get in trouble when you're trying to make adjustments on the car if you don't in interpret what he's saying on the radio. Doc, what are they saying now about that car? Well, Andy, it's a very good point. They actually called him back on the radio a moment ago to clarify. He said rear tire chatter. Now, when they made that pit stop, they put a rubber in the right rear because then he said the car was so loose on entry, he couldn't get completely out of the throttle, and it was tight on exit. Now, since that communication a couple laps ago, Denny has said the car has just gotten worse and worse, almost undrivable. It is so hard out there, so he's hanging on to the next pit stop. going to be able to hang on, make an adjustment. He said, right now, it's all about just keeping track position and keeping it out of the wall. I don't know if it were two, was 2007 or 2008, but this track was the absolute worst race car balance-wise that I've ever had. This track can be so miserable. We fought that race car the whole night. It sounds like that's what's going on with Denny. They've got something wrong in that car that's not working on the bumps, the air pressures, the shocks, and this track can just be terrible to drive. Yeah, there's definitely something wrong when you see Denny Hamlin running ninth in a nationwide race. You expect him to be one of the top three. Well, Denny is uh, languishing much further in traffic than he would like, while Austin Dillon has had nothing but clear sailing on the nose of his Chevrolet all night long. He's been the only leader of the race so far. 55, now 56 laps in the book, all paced by the driver of the Richard Childress Racing number three here in Kentucky. NASCAR Nationwide Series, Sparta, Kentucky at the Kentucky Speedway, where this race for second is heating up. 33's Kevin Harvick, that far behind Austin Dillon, your race leader right there. With Ricky Stenhouse Jr. continuing to rumble toward the front. Now Ricky Stenhouse on the last pit stop got four tires, and I think that's paying off now late in this run. He's uh, He's been really fast to the center of the corner, but he can't put together a whole lap here to get by Harvick. One thing you'll see with these races that transition from day to night is that the guy that gets out front early is not necessarily going to be the guy that, that's going to be there at the end to beat. 
right now that six car does look good. Those four tires are coming alive. But Austin Dillon, I think, has done a great job. He started on the pole. He's held off Harvick and these guys on each restart, and he's set sail. And, and you know, you really don't know how fast the guy's car is right now. Look well, at this lap traffic. Ricky's been right in the mix. A couple of really close calls. When you're doing that, Carl, you're leading the race, and you, you're really good out here with the conditions that way they are. I mean, it's a pretty big responsibility to try to keep up with the track, though. And when you're leading, it's hard to adjust on that car. Yeah. I don't imagine. You know how it is. Yeah. You're leading a race like this, and you're out there, and things, you know, you, you get kind of complacent. Don't say anything, Alan. I know you're <laughs> I know what it's hey, like to have a driver that's leading the race. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> and you get a little complacent. Austin Dillon, you know, has got to work really hard not to do that, because these guys back here are racing, fighting, clawing. They're adjusting their race cars. And as Ricky gets by the 33, it looks like he'll clear him for second place and set sail. Well, now we'll see how good Austin Dillon's car is. About 20 laps away from pit stops if we don't see the yellow flag again. And about to hit the one-third mark of this race. Just the one caution so far. Championship, big story all season long in the Nationwide Series. It's been close. The top three players, actually the top four players in the fight tonight. Austin Dillon leads. Stenhouse Jr. is second. Sam Hornis Jr. is fourth. And Elliott Sadler is way back in 12th place. He just gave up a spot to Brad Kozlowski. The best cars through the center, three and four, right on the bottom. I don't know how you're handling the drive down there, but that's where the fastest cars are running. I can't run down there, man. We're just, it won't do anything I want it to do. That's all, man. It's... Yeah, the handles definitely fell off of this car. He can't drive it to the, anywhere near the bottom, so he can't handle the bumps. This is one of the places that I really felt like this team might struggle. We've seen them run real well on these smooth tracks, but they have a lot of issues where they're dragging that splitter and they're on it too much. And this is the kind of track that it's, you got to keep that car off the racetrack. Boy, he is wicked loose, it looks like, into three. Just trying really hard not to slide that race car up the racetrack and get out of the groove. It sounds like Jamie has uh, more on the, the number two car, Billy Seven. Yeah, and I talked to his crew chief, Luke Lambert, earlier today, and he said, yes, they're definitely struggling on this style of track. Other than Las Vegas, they haven't had a result that they wanted. There's his crew chief on the right side, and you guys nailed it. He's very loose in. He says the right rear shock feels like it's bouncing like a basketball. He's desperately wanting some changes. Hi, right, Jamie. Yeah. So, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, the shock in a track like this is difficult. You put springs in the car. The springs are what hold the car up, and the shock has to be matched perfectly to the springs so when it bounces over those bumps, the tire doesn't feel like it's coming off of the racetrack. But if you've got the wrong shock on it, it feels like you've got a pogo stick down there. Kurt Busch passing for fourth place right here. He's got the right shocks on. Mike Beam. Yeah. Uh, we've run really well here with Mike Beam, and he's Kurt's crew chief. He was a crew chief on my car last year on the 60. And uh, they've been working really hard this year and doing well. And one other thing, you know, we're also seeing for the first time tonight the trend of a car's handling over the, over a full fuel run. Right, first caution came out 25 laps into the race. Now we're going a full fuel run here, and some guys, Stenhouse, maybe Kurt, have better long-run cars than others. And we still haven't seen that sun go down. We're only 70 laps in, 69 laps in. We've got a lot of racing left. The track and the, the conditions of this track can change a ton. When that cold front came through today, qualifying, everyone picked up about three or four tenths in the cup cars. So I think the track's going to change. Guys who maybe their shock package or their splitter's not right, it could come around and run really well for them. Guys that are running well right now could have trouble. Air temperature's actually gone back up three degrees since the start of the race. Austin Dillon has had no trouble so far. The first third of this event have been dominated by that three car and its driver. Oh, we summer has arrived. With each passing day, the mercury rises. Temperatures increase both outside and inside the race cars. This is the heat within which championship contenders are forged, while all others simply melt away. And it's a very tight championship battle this night at Kentucky Speedway, entering the night. Four drivers within 34 points. Austin Dillon, the driver who was second in points heading into the night leading the way and that's important because if you want to win the nationwide series championship you have to be good on mile and a half tracks and countdown we said earlier these types of tracks are, are mile and a half they're, they're the bread and butter of this series and ricky stenhouse jr in the six who's running in second right now 
has been very good at these tracks this year. He, he won at Vegas, he won at Texas, but struggled in Charlotte, and he told you there's a reason for that, Russell. Yeah, he, he, he struggled a lot. You know, he struggled big time at Michigan and struggled big time at Dover. Now look at Charlotte. We'll give him a break. He broke a dry shaft there. But I told him the day, I said, I asked him, so Ricky, what's going on with these cars? He said, Rusty, we tried some things in Michigan and Dover, which I consider our non-standard setups. We were experimenting a little bit. He said, watch us today. We got kind of our basic setup back in the car. I feel real good. And I think today you're gonna be able to judge me in the way we really look. So right now, Brad, he's in second place. He's looking good. Looks like you're back on track to me. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, anytime automatically when someone would ask me during the week when we were going to a mile and a half track, who's the favorite, I would automatically say Ricky Stenhouse. But whoever was driving one of these Roush Fenway cars, they're excellent. But I'll tell you what, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is fastest car on the racetrack. And when he gets to Austin Dillon, he's a second and a half behind. They're gonna have a heck of a race. Coming up on pit stops as we are just past the one third mark, Danica Patrick. Vince? Danica Patrick says the car is loose into turn one and tight on exit of both ends, but still running pretty well, as you noted, in the 13th position now. Of her four career top tens, three have come on the mile and a half. This intermediate size track, definitely her comfort zone. Yeah, currently in 13th, running right by Brad, uh, Brad Sweet. We've seen them on the track a lot together. Coming up on pit stops, so let's head back upstairs to AV and the gang. All right, Nicole, thanks. We have already seen Cole Witt on pit road under the green flag. That during the commercial break a couple of minutes ago, stopping much shorter than we expected. So either they didn't get it full of fuel on the only pit stop they made so far, or they were making a strategy play. We'll follow up on that in a little bit. Uh, caution out, out, only time in the race at lap 25. For a Jamie Mosley spin, all the leaders came to pit road. Eight drivers got just right side tires only, including this young man, Austin Dillon. Now we're expecting to see him on the pit lane again around lap 83 to 85. Maybe some push it even a couple laps further than that. I'm impressed with the way the tires are holding speed through the run. They're the fastest lap that Austin Dillon's run is a 31.29. He's still running down in the 31 second bracket. Last lap, a 31.90. Yeah, let's hear it. Sounds like the 18 has some issues. Let's hear what he has to say about it. Sounds like you got a miss or something, yeah. You want to bring it to us or do you want to ride it out or does it mean to bring it to us? All right, so keep an eye on Denny Hamlin in that 18 car. Meantime, some of the top five have made the move to pit road, Jamie. And Kevin Harvick took right side's only last stop, and he slipped back a couple of spots, just looking for overall grip, doing four tires, as you see on the left-hand side, as the leader of the race comes down pit road. Austin Dillon in. Sam Hornish has also stopped. Elliot Sadler has come to the pit lane. Kurt Busch. Johanna Long all in for green flag pit stops. This one at lap 82 for Austin Dillon, Dave. And Allen, he reported that his car was looser and looser on that run, but it was encouraged by the crew. Hey, not bad, you're still out in front. And so they will make just an air pressure adjustment. Four tires will go on the three car. Remember, he was one of the guys that took two last time, and the leader will cleanly come on to pit road, get service, and cleanly leave. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. took over the lead when Austin Dillon pitted. He now comes down the pit lane, Vince. Well, in that six of Ricky Stenhouse, remember they talked about the fact that the car's been on the splitter. It's a four-tire change, also making a chassis Get adjustment up, to guys. help him with the splitter. He says he can't attack the corner the way he wants because the way the car's banging on that splitter. Having a little trouble there on the left side, guys. Well, what happened is Ricky drove around the car that was behind the box, uh, the box behind him. He got on the brakes a little bit too hard. It looks like he slid a little closer to that wall than he wanted okay, to. Jack Man had trouble. Back him up, back him up. Yeah, they got big problems. The bad pit stop. Right, now they have to back him up. They're going to lose a ton 